everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you um, a mold <laughs> work. Basically, uh, the re I actually thought twice if I should be showing this or not. Uh, but I think I'll go ahead and show it. Maybe we can take the positives out of it. Now this is a really, really old um, silicon mold that I had uh, uh, picked up easily like about eight years ago. And uh, you can see that when I bought this mold itself, it was in it was in a pretty bad shape. Um, so you know you would uh, you would be surprised about uh, the outcome of this particular uh, mold. As in, as soon as I press the clay and get the mold out, it's not going to it's going to look very uh, 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 cracked and chapped in certain places, and it's not going to have a neat finish at all. Unlike the silicone molds that we get today, which have a much better finish. Uh, plus, the other thing is I don't rely too much on silicon molds. I generally tend to work on uh, each of the shapes by hand. Uh, but then I will show you, this is a peacock. Um, really, I mean, when you look at the condition of the mold, you can make out that it's it's not, it's, it's probably seen better days. Um, so yeah, so what I would generally do with a mold piece to start off with is always align it with oil. Now, if you think your uh, your fingers don't really enter the uh, the smaller places, I would suggest you do this with um, some sort of a paintbrush, an old paintbrush that you have. Just line it well with oil. I would line the outsides as well because I will show you how we can, um, you know, how I would convert a pendant like this into something absolutely beautiful and sellable. Um, you mean obviously there when I say that there is a significant amount of work that will go into making the pendant look quite nice because I would I wouldn't just press it remove it and no I wouldn't do that I would try and inculcate put in at least some of the designs um, that I like on the piece and uh, you know we'll see how that how that happens so I've just applied a little bit of oil over you can see the shine that it's um, you know it's it's applied evenly and it's applied all over and um, I have a well kneaded ball of clay now this is not too deep so I will not really uh, uh, put it in layers and layer it in the mold I will just try pressing it down on the hole and get it nice and neat I'm looking at roughly a thickness uh, you know of the pendant uh, roughly of about 0 0.5 centimeters um, the mold will obviously lift up uh, so including that maximum would be about 0 0.6 centimeters and not beyond that because it's going to be so heavy. Uh, I would just take a rolling pin and get it because I just need a flat piece. Once that's done, I see no air bubbles of any sort on this. So what I would do is I would just gently remove it off. You can clearly make out that, you know, what I have here is just the external size. I don't have anything, uh, the external, um, you know, the outline rather. And um, I would have, I have nothing more than that. Now what I would do obviously to this is change the whole design. You would be surprised on how this pendant is going to look after the work is done. So I'm just I'm just trying to flatten all the sides here. And I'll just use a small cutter, one of my cookie cutters. Line it with a little bit of oil on the sides. And just cut it off. There you go. I'll just cut the piece. So I have something like this that's ready. Now what I would do is, just work on the sides. If you see there is a good quantity that's, you know, raised up. So going by that, this you can make out that this is going to be a relatively heavy pendant. And what I would do now is I will use the pen refill and 
I'll just do this. I'm just going to do a semicircular design. I'm not making a whole curved design there. I have a a pen, um, part of another pen basically. I'm just doing a semicircular design here as well. Moles are actually uh, well. I mean, it's a it's an it's an effective way to get uh, some complicated designs in place, uh, but it's not amongst my most preferred methods. I prefer doing freehand drawing and uh, freehand, uh, you know, patterning and carving. So once that's done, I'll just use a knife. simple you know I'm not doing anything complex here but you'll see that slowly the whole thing is going to start getting is going to look transformed and quite nice and refined actually I would just work on oh sorry I would just work on these as well I just use a refill for this It's a really easy way to make uh, uh, grand designs, uh, but I will also be uploading a video of um, uh, another um, a variation of uh, making a peacock pendant um, in a really easy manner. I would just dot it. So uh, when you see uh, dots like this, when you change the contrasting texture, it helps to bring out the design. So you see that as as I'm as I'm dotting the whole uh, back backdrop, the uh, the face and the body part kind of lifts up automatically. The design kind of shows up. I'll just do a neat job here. And there you go. Yep, it's good. I'll use a small, um, you, you can use a refill for this as well. I'll just draw the eye a little bit. Just draw the eye. I'll draw a little this thing for the beak. What I would do now is I would just use half of this. I'm not going to press in the whole thing and get a circular shape. I won't do that. I'm just doing this so that I get a scale like design all across the body. If you see, I'm not doing the whole thing. It's just uh, I'm not I'm not getting it a circular. I'm getting it semicircular. You, a, a refill would work perfectly fine for this. So I have something like this that's ready. Now obviously I uh, would change the uh, sides as well of the entire design. Um, what I would do is you can use the same thing and go on to just press in this manner. So what this does is it changes the texture in this manner. A refill works perfectly fine for this guys so you don't have to really look for um, you know something like this it's all right. I'll just show this in a minute.
I will upload um, a video of um, a peacock without a mold as well. I've already shown a cutwork uh, uh, design, uh, which is a very simple cutwork design of a bird, peacock, whatever you want to call it. Just overlapping circles here. Just, it's just a fun way to play around with textures and you know, so much room for creativity there. So. There you go. You have something like this. Now we start designing it. The design part, I would just use a little stick bead like this, put it here. More like a division between each of those petals or feathers or whatever you want to call it. Remember that when I'm putting this, uh, nothing is basically coming at the ba back part. You know, no pins are coming back. So please be careful of that. Uh, you don't want to really hurt uh, hurt anyone, uh, you know, when you when you do something like that. These nichrome pins are sharp and you just want to be careful about the whole thing. Just double check it always. What I have here is you can also add something like this, but I'd suggest that you, uh, you know, currently I don't have the smaller uh, stick beads, but if you have the smaller uh, stick beads, try and use that for this, this part. Uh, I think the smaller ones look better. Um, you can use two here for the feet. there you go now obviously for the um, for the uh, what do you say for the hook I would continue to you know use a nichrome U pin make sure you're placing it correctly uh, atop the head here yeah that's the place so we just put it in carefully and for the rest of the pendant we can put this these little gungru beads again i would leave this to you you are free to do and uh, design it the way you want i'll just show you uh, when i add a couple of them maybe like a few of them Because these pieces, um, you know, would would look brilliant when they are painted. Really uh, uh, bright and Indian and quite nice, actually. Just a few of them. These are just some gungru beads that I have here. Um, just put these remember that you don't want to make the pendant uh, way too thick one two three four five six seven yep so uh, I'd stop at that I think uh, I'll stop at this you don't want to make make the pendant um, extremely thick because that's going to just weigh it down and uh, you know I, I it's it's not necessary actually uh, so this is a roughly of a thickness of about 0 0.6 centimeters so about 0 0.5 0 0.6 centimeters including the, the the top relief part the 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 mold part I would say is a good size inclusive uh, because you know cumulatively having a size of 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 centimeters for a pendant is good enough 
because it is going to shrink a little bit um, you know it will obviously lose uh, lose a little bit of its uh, weight when it starts to dehydrate rather when it's starting to dry uh, and then uh, that will be when it starts to dry and becomes bone dry uh, it will start to shrink a bit and then your next level of shrinkage is going to happen post um, I mean during its uh, firing so um, this is it guys um, I hope you uh, I hope you found this uh, I hope you like this video uh, I think this is there's not much really to uh, explain here because I think uh, you know I was just using this like I said I used this old mold over here that I have uh, it's it's not in great shape but I still what I what I could get out of it is pretty decent I, I think <laughs> and um, I, you know just line it with a little bit of oil and um, I made a pendant like this so that's it I hope you find this uh, I hope you like the video if yes please uh, you know please subscribe to our YouTube channel and thank you so much for watching everyone thank you